Oh, greetings everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody asked me, uh, did Cain's kids survive the flood? Huh, good question. The Bible does not directly say yes or no. But every so-called preacher of every 501c3 business with the name church in it claims, oh, they must have died in the flood. But the Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't say, yay, they made it or no, they didn't. It doesn't say. But there's only two possibilities. One, the Lord said to take two of every kind, every creature. Could there have been a male and a female of Cain's line uh, on the ark? Like there was two of every dog and two of every uh, two cats and two antelopes and two of this and two of that. I don't know. Bible doesn't say yes, doesn't say no. But there's another possibility. Did one of Noah's sons marry one of the daughters of Cain? Well, it depends on who you believe Cain's father was. Some people will say that Cain was fathered by Adam. Well, if that was true, why is Cain missing from Adam's genealogy lineage? Cain is never listed. And of course, a pastor or so-called will say, well, you know, he was the first sinner, so he was deleted. Uh, where does it say that in the Bible? It don't. But the Bible does say this. In 1 John 3.12, the Bible says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Now, who was the wicked one? If you think Adam was his father, then Adam was the wicked one. Was Adam the wicked one? I don't think so. But um, let's take a look at something else. All right, let's go to Matthew 13. Verse 24. Words of Christ in red. Another parable put he, Jesus, he uh, put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, in now in uh, Genesis chapter twenty six, we read the following verse one. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac, went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines under Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed. Wait a minute, he's talking to a man here. Is this man a tree that is bringing forth Apple seeds? No. No, in this instance, seed means children, progeny, his descendants. And unto thy seed I will give these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. So he's talking to Isaac here. And I will make thy seed children to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed 
shall the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. So God here is talking to Isaac, the son of Abraham, and he says, I will multiply your seed. Hmm. Do you know that in the Greek New Testament, you know what the word seed is translated as? It's from the word sperma. That's where we get the word sperm from. You know, when a man is with a woman and they're having uh, fun, uh, when the man's done, well, yeah. So, let's go back to Matthew 13. Uh, let's see. Verse 24, Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed, seed in his field. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares. Uh, that's an old English word that means weeds. His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Hey, uh, didn't you plant all these good seeds? Where did all these weeds come from? Verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, nope. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather to ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Hmm. Okay. Let's skip down to verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare, or explain, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Uh, explain to us these weeds in the field, dude. Well, that's... Never mind. I'm not trying to be sacrilegious. Verse 37. He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Jesus called himself the Son of Man many, many times. The Bible plainly teaches that Jesus created all things. In the book of Colossians 1.16, For by him, Jesus, were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Period. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Oh yeah. So, let's go back to Matthew 13, verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Who's the wicked one? Adam? If you listen to denominational, demon-nominational preachers, 
they'll tell you, oh, well, Adam fathered Cain, so Adam must be the wicked one. Listen to this. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares, the weeds, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. I mean, a sixth grader could understand this. Is Adam the devil? No. The enemy that sowed the tares, the weeds, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. How come a sixth grader can understand this, but demon nominational churchgoers can't? Plain and simple, right? Absolutely. Now, Noah had three sons. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 9. This is the story about Noah after the flood. And if you don't know the story of Noah and the flood, well, I suggest you get a King James Bible, go to Genesis chapter 1, and start reading from there. And don't finish until you get to Revelation chapter 22. Uh, I did it in five months. You know what? You can read three chapters in the Bible every single day. And in one year, you will have gone through the entire Bible. Or you can send me a USB drive and I will send you a copy of the Bible on audio. You can stick it in your car and listen to the Bible on audio on your way to work every day, which oftentimes I do. And you'd be surprised how much you'll learn and how quickly. So, uh, okay, flood is over. Noah is off the ark and they're getting ready to redo the earth. Um, let's see, where should I start? Well, let's see. Let's start Genesis 9 and verse 9. And I, behold, I, God, establish my covenant with you, Noah, and with your seed after you. I'm sorry, Noah's not an apple tree that produces uh, apple seeds. No. When it says seed, he's talking about children. Verse 10. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you, and from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any, any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there be any more a flood to destroy the earth. Now that doesn't mean there's not going to be any more floods, it just means there's not going to be a total worldwide flood. And... Some people say the flood was local, you know, it was just in this valley where they were, you know. Uh, I don't believe that, but, you know, is it a point to disfellowship somebody over? No, I don't think so. But the thing is, if the flood was only going to be in this one local area, why build a boat? Why build an ark? What a waste of time. Hey, Noah, I'm going to flood this valley, so why don't you go over the uh, mountain here and go to the other side of the other mountain, and you'll escape the flood that I'm going to send over this valley. I mean, come on, people. Besides, the Bible says the flood covered the whole earth. 
they find seashells on top of the highest mountains in the Himalayas. You know, you ever heard of Mount Everest? Yeah. Why? Because there was a flood and it covered all the mountains. I mean, come on, it's not that hard to figure out. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And that's another thing. If there was only going to be a local flood, why have all these animals? Why the earth, the rest of the earth is going to be f full of animals. You don't need to bring animals on an ark if, if the whole planet wasn't flooded out and died and drowned. I mean, come on, people. It's like, Really? Verse 11, And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, all flesh. Neither shall there be any more a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Perpetual. What does that mean? It means forever. I do set my bow in the clouds. Have you ever seen a bow and arrow? You know, a bow is curved. Uh, what do they call a rainbow? Yeah, a rainbow, a bow. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token for a covenant between me and the earth. And it's funny how there's a certain group of LBGT who have adopted the multicolored rainbow as their symbol. Uh, they're basically mocking the Lord, but the thing is, the Lord used that as his covenant, sign of his covenant, not to destroy the earth and the flood again. But next time, there's not going to be a flood of water, it's going to be fire. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood, a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem. Shem was the chosen, the promised seed. Okay? In Luke chapter 3, you can look up the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Judah, all the way back through Shem, all the way back to Adam. Seriously, I'm not going to read it because, you know, endless genealogies. But Jesus Christ went all the way from Joseph well, he was likened, Joseph wasn't his father, actually, but he was reckoned from Judah all the way back through Shem to Adam. If you don't believe me, read Luke chapter 3. You know, I don't want to make this a two-hour production. And the sons of Hammon that went forth and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Why does the Bible say that? Well, first of all, Ham's not kosher, right? Yeah. And Canaan, the Bible never says anything nice about Canaan or his descendants, the Canaanites. Matter of fact, God said to kill the Canaanites. He told Israel, go into land and kill all the Canaanites. He didn't say, oh, well, you know, uh, go into the land and tell them about the love of Jesus. He didn't say that. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. 
These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Now, did he look at his father naked and that was a horrible sin? Or was there something else involved here? I think there was. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Uh, now, if you were asleep and somebody looked at you naked, are you going to know what, what happened? Uh, I don't think so. I think there's more to this story than uh, than uh, we're being led to believe here. And we're going to cover that in a minute. And he, Noah, said, Cursed be Canaan. Cursed be Canaan. Gosh, can you imagine Noah cursing his own son? A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be a servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Hmm. All right, what is this about uncovering the nakedness? Uh, Leviticus 18.10. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. Is it talking about undressing or are we talking about something different? I mean, come on now. You ever change the diaper of your son or your daughter? Is that uncovering nakedness? I don't think so. Leviticus 20, 17. And if a man shall take his sister his father's daughter or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. Now this is what I think happened to Noah. Leviticus 18.8 8. The nakedness of thy father's wife thou shalt not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Did Canaan see his father's nakedness? Did you notice when you continue reading that Noah never had any more children? Did Canaan defile his wife? Um, I don't know. Bible doesn't say yes. Doesn't say no. Leviticus 18.16 Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. And you can read Leviticus 18.11, Leviticus 18.7, Leviticus 18.9, Leviticus 18.15. I mean, you know, come on now. What does it mean, nakedness? Uh... They're talking more about, they're, you know, there's more to it than that. Now, like I said, Jesus' lineage was all the way from his time, all the way back through Shem, through Adam. Luke chapter 3. Let me make sure of that because I'm not 100%. I'm 99%, but I want to make sure. Yep, I was right. Luke 3, um, verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, let's see. Verse 32, which was the son of 
Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Solomon, which was the son of Nesson, uh, verse 33, which was the son of Aminadab, son of Aram, Ezram, Perez, Judah, Jacob, Isaac, Abraham. Uh, that's verse 34. And, um, and then when you get down to uh, verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was called the son of God because after all, who is his mother? You Well, you could say Mother Earth, but the Bible don't say that. But who was his father? God was his father. But Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God. In Job 38, angels are called the sons of God. And they shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. The Bible doesn't record what day the uh, angels were created, but the angels existed before the foundation of the earth. And they have to be angels because in Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation or the creation of the earth. Adam didn't exist until eight days. No, I'm sorry, six days. Six days? Yeah, six days after the earth was created. So, you know, there you go. All right, so, there was nothing wrong with the line of Japheth, but they were not the chosen seed line. But Canaan was cursed by Noah. So let's see what the Bible says about Canaan. Now, something to consider here. Bible doesn't tell you who Shem, Ham, or Japheth married. It doesn't mention it. Who did Ham marry? What was the lineage of his wife? Could he have married a daughter of Cain? It's possible. I believe it's true, but I, can I prove it from the Bible? No. But let's take a look at something. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 1. And Isaac, now remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the chosen people. And Isaac called Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed by God to Israel. I have covered this so many times. Uh, look at my playlist. You only have I known, and uh, the Abrahamic covenant, the covenant God made with Abraham. Very important. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Why? Uh, the enemy that sowed them is the devil? I mean, if they were okay, why didn't... Isaac called Jacob and said, Jacob, go find a daughter of Canaan and preach to her the love of Jesus because Jesus loves everybody. No. Doesn't say that. Genesis 28, 6. And Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take him a wife from thence and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughter's of Canaan. Verse 8. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan please not Isaac his father, hmm, yeah, don't marry a Canaanite. Uh, Genesis 36 2. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Ada, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Ahola Bemama, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zippian the Hivite. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. I did a Bible study on why God hated Esau. And yes, in the book of Romans, it said, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Hmm. 
and everybody yeah uh, so let's take a look well let's see how much God loved the Canaanites Genesis 24 3 and I will make thee swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell verse 37 and my master may be swear saying thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell Abraham did not want Isaac having a Canaanite wife period all right let's see how much the Lord loves the Canaanites Exodus 23 23 for mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Uh, we're not talking about driving on the interstate and cutting in front of somebody with their car. No, he's going to cut them off by the edge of the sword. Yeah. Hmm. Numbers 21.3, And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them. Utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. But, but God loves everybody and he wants them to be saved. Hmm. You know, when you hear stuff like that, you know that they're either deceiving you or they've never bothered to read the Bible. I mean, what is it, a waste of their time? Deuteronomy 2017. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 17. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. What? But God loves everybody. Huh. Oh, but now Jesus comes, and now we got the new and improved God that loves everybody. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. Wow. Wow. How about the book of Judges, chapter 1 and verse 4? And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them, slew of them. You know what slew means? S-L-E-W, it means they killed them. And they slew of them in Bezek, 10,000 men. And they found Adana Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Wow. Hmm. Let's see. How about we read Ezra chapter 9? Little background here. Israel was taken into captivity into Assyria, and they never returned to the land because the Lord had gotten angry with them. But then Judah and Jerusalem also did wickedly, and God let the Babylonians take them into captivity where they were slaves for 70 years. Well, then the Persians came, the Medes and the Persians, the per, uh, and the Lord had the king of Persia and the Medes let Judah return back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. After 70 years, and um, that this alone is an entire multi-hour study. So I'm just giving you an overview. But in Ezra chapter 9, we find out that is, uh, Judah had intermarried with, well, let's read it. Ezra 9.1. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not, 
have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, holy seed, holy seed, H-O-L-Y, seed as in children. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this just pass. Now, if there's a holy seed, doesn't that mean there's an unholy seed? Absolutely. And if you keep reading this, they were grieved. And what did they say to do? They said, divorce your wives and your husbands. Well, you're divorce them and your bastard children and cast them out. And that's the Bob paraphrase. But if you don't believe me, read the entire chapter. I'm not making this stuff up. So, um, now you know what? They always, uh, the evil wolves in sheep's clothing will always run to the exception instead of the rule. And then in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 4, they'll say, oh, Simon was a Canaanite. Uh, was Simon a Canaanite by blood or did he live in Canaan? I mean, if you were born in Texas and lived in Texas, they would call you a Texan, right? I mean, if you moved to California and you had a cowboy hat and cowboy boots, are you a Californian or are you a Texan? You know? I don't know. Jesus uh, was born in Bethlehem but he lived in Nazareth and he was called a Nazarene he was called a Galilean because he lived in Galilee you know where you're from uh, sometimes is what they call you in Genesis chapter 38 verse 2 and Judah one of the 12 tribes of Israel saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. And guess what? He had three sons by this Canaanite. God killed two of them because they were evil. Hmm. Yes. All right, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, what are we going to do? How about we take a look at Zechariah, chapter 14, and verse 21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein talking about sacrifices and in that day there shall no more there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts no more tares no more weeds Zechariah 14 21 look it up I don't make this stuff up there's people that think I just make this stuff up as I go along but I don't. Holy seed. You know, if there's a holy seed, there has to be an unholy seed. The tares, the weeds. The enemy that sowed them is the Adam? No, the devil. So, who did Ham marry? Good question. How about Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 16? 
But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. But thou shalt utterly destroy them. Utterly destroy them. Utterly destroy them. Namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Hmm. Uh, he doesn't say, oh, go to the cities and tell them about the love of Jesus. No, go in and kill them all. Why is that? I mean, if they were savable, why would you do that? The enemy that sowed the tares is the devil. Yeah. So, if you want to believe Eve was talking to a snake and she took a bite of an apple... That's up to you. But Jesus makes it plain in the parable of the wheat and the tares. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one. You want to believe Adam was the wicked one? That's okay with me. I don't care. But I know who the wicked one is. Adam sinned. I've done worse things than Adam probably ever did. At least for the first half of my life. I've done some horrible things that I'm ashamed of. Horrible things. I'm surprised the Lord didn't let me die at a young age. I am. I'm shocked. I don't know what he saw in me. He didn't see anything good in me that I, you know, <laughs> no which is why I try to serve him with these Bible studies. I, you know, what's the story of the woman that was weeping at his feet? Let's go to Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees, a sect of the Jews, desired him, Jesus, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. This woman was behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Verse 41. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence. Pence was a day's wage. That's 500 days of wages for a Unskilled laborer. That's a lot of money, people. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave bo them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simon answered and he said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. Yeah, the guy that owes you 500 or the guy that owes you 50? Who's going to love you more? And he, Jesus, said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. 
but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ce ceased to kiss my feet. Wow. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. You know what? Of all these people, I can relate to the woman weeping with tears shedding on Jesus' feast. I can relate to that. I really can. I'm surprised the Lord hasn't given me, hasn't killed me. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he, Jesus, said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. All I can say is, Amen to that. So, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one. Of. What are cakes made of? Are they not made of, of flour, of sugar, of eggs? Are they not made of things? Cakes are not like flour. Cain wasn't like the devil. He was of the devil. Big difference. Ye are of your father the devil, Jesus said to a certain group of people. All right, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou we shall be made free? Um, the thing is, Esau was a child of Abraham, and yet they were never in Egypt. They were never in bondage to Egypt like Israel was. Think about it. Esau married two Canaanite Hittite women. We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Uh, well, they were complaining about being under the heel of Rome at this time. Hmm. Are you really free? No, they were not. Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Oh yeah, Esau was Abraham's seed. And God hated him. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which is ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Well, yeah, Esau could say that too. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, 
which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Let's read verse 37 again. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil. Now, is Jesus calling them names? Nah, 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 nah. You're of your father, the devil. Is he using a figure of speech? You know, like when a guy sees an attractive woman and he says, wow, what a fox. Obviously, she's not a four-legged canine with a tail. Well, a furry tail. You know, that wags, you know, dog wags the tail when it's happy. No. So, is this a figure of speech? Is he calling them names? Or is he telling the truth? We're going we're to find out in a minute. Verse 44, ye are of, of, of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who, oh, what? what? He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was the first murderer the, from the beginning? Uh... Uh, I'm going to give you three guesses and the first two don't count. Cain killed Abel. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Ye are of your father the devil. Figure of speech? Calling them names? Or is he telling them the truth? Verse 45, and because I tell you the truth, Jesus is calling them the children of the devil and he says he's telling them the truth. Wow. Not a figure of speech. He's not calling them names. He's telling the truth. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye Therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the you-know-whos. Wow. Uh, if you don't know who he was talking to, verse 48 tells you. And I don't even want to say that word, because that word gets me in trouble with uh, a certain platform every time. I suggest you look up John 8, 48 and see who Jesus is talking to here. Wow. 
So, not as Cain who was of that wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Do you get the idea now? You think he was talking to a snake? I don't think so. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that. You know, the Bible will explain the Bible if you let it. Of course, it only works with the King James, which is why all these ministries, so-called, fight against the King James, because they want you to use, like the NIV, which is printed by the same company that prints the Satanic Bible. Well, the parent company does. You know, can you imagine that? The company that owns Fox News, the Fox Network, you know, tell that Fox Herod, owns the company that prints the Satanic Bible and the Joy of Gay Sex, a how-to pictorial manual. And they also print the NIV Bible. So the company parent that prints the NIV Bible prints satanic literature and gay sex. Yeah. And they'll tell you the NIV is, you know, it's modern Bible version, you know, easy to read. Uh. Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent... Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Didn't we read about being naked earlier? Yeah. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. What do aprons cover? Uh, your face? No. Your feet? No. Hmm. Wow. Let's skip down to verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. If you get an old dictionary, beguiled means seduced. If you get a modern dictionary, it means something entirely different. Now remember, one of the largest publishers in the world owns the printer of the Satanic Bible. Hmm. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. Above all cattle and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity. Enmity is extreme hatred. And I will put enmity between thee, the serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed. Do serpents, uh, are they a plant that has apple trees? No. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, Listen to this carefully. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and give you toothaches for reading, for biting into an apple. And have you could have bleeding gums. No. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. 
Oh, wait a minute. If she ate an apple, what, why, why is she going to have sorrow bringing forth children, pain in childbirth? Why is that? Hmm. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Who was her desire for before this? Good question. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now remember, the woman ate of the fruit. Now if Eve ate of the fruit, uh, let's read Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. What is an adulterous woman? It's a woman that cheats on her husband with other men. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth. Huh? Why are they talking about a woman that cheats on her husband, eats and wipes her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness? Whoa. Uh, what did Eve eat? Um, hmm. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Wow. So, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between her seed and thy seed. Hmm. What is a serpent? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven, war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Now, dragon is a figure of speech, granted. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. The dragon was cast out of heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, that old serpent. Why is he called an old serpent? Because that serpent had been around for a long time. Thousands of years. The Garden of Eden. Does the Bible identify who this dragon and old serpent is? Yes. Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. I've had people tell me the devil and Satan is two different beings. Well, my Bible says otherwise. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's you, me, and everybody else, people. We may not be deceived on everything, but I'll guarantee you there's something we've been deceived on. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Revelation 12 is one of the most important Bibles, uh, chapters in the entire book. So. Hmm. So. Were there... To a uh, son and daughter of Cain on the ark? Or did Canaan, Ham, I'm sorry, Ham, marry a daughter of Cain? My guess is Cain was fathered by a, his mother was a daughter of Cain. After all, why would they, why would you name your kid Canaan, 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 after Cain, in honor of their father. I bet your mama, I bet your mama named the, the, the son. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, usually I try not to speculate too far away from the Bible. I try to stuff that I can prove, but 
you know, if I'm not sure, I let you know. I'm not sure, but I think it is along these lines. So, what happened to Cain's descendants during the flood? Your guess is as good as mine. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.